Welcome everyone. Thank you very much to be here tonight. So it's our first uh, Agile uh, uh, BIM uh, meetup uh, in English. So we have uh, uh, more, more people tonight from uh, around the world, uh, I think. Uh, so we welcome uh, David Delgado Vandrel tonight. Uh, my pronunciation is, is okay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and uh, and we so we um, we uh, we we met him uh, or we, we 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 discover him a few uh, a few months ago I think and I think it he was one of the first uh, uh, people to to. Uh, to, uh, to to develop uh, an agile beam uh, approach so we, we we are very happy to have him tonight and uh, to to, uh, to to exchange with uh, with him tonight uh, so the presentation is here so we are using uh, google meet tonight so as you see there is some spamming sometimes so i hope <laughs> it was the last uh, Spam and uh, so if you want to ask some question, you can use the the comments, uh, and after you can uh, open your mic if you, if you want uh, to 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 ask uh, more things. Uh, but the idea is uh, is uh, to to let the the present uh, tutor uh, uh, to 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 first uh, ask a question in the comments, and after you you, you can open your mic. Uh, so we will have uh, just a little presentation about the Agile community uh, from uh, Sébastien, who is working with me on the Agile Beam. And uh, hello, Sébastien. Hello. You and after we have the presentation of, of uh, David. So Sébastien. Yeah. Uh, you, can you share your slide? Uh, or I share it. I share it. I, I share my slide. No. You can see them? Uh, yes. Mm. I can see it, but not very, very well. But uh, I, anyway, uh, so Agile Beam, so the idea of uh, creating the group Agile Beam is that you, we met uh, more and more people that, uh, that uh, are interested by uh, using uh, agile, uh, agility in the context of construction industry. Uh, so we, we made a lot of one-to-one uh, uh, -one call with people and uh, we thought that it was uh, better uh, to, um, if we had a place, uh, a site or a group uh, to, to discuss about uh, this subject. Because uh, even if we are, for the moment, uh, not the ma majority, it could grow and uh, this way we, could, uh, we can be more, more powerful. And uh, so we created a, a wiki uh, a wiki site. We, are we have different spaces. We have, uh, can you share the slide of the agilebeam.org? Yes. So this is a site you can find at uh, agilebeam.org. Uh, so it's a it's a site with some uh, general um, information about uh, agility. There, there's not a lot of content for now. Uh, because uh, we didn't have so much time to, to maintain it, but uh, at least we, we have all the meetup. We have uh, a list of uh, toolbox of um, uh, recipes that can be used in a, to, uh, um, to, uh, to, to, have, uh, to, to, say, to develop a framework uh, with the community. So this is still in, uh, in a development phase. So if you can uh, change the slide. Uh, uh, I know. I don't know all of you. Uh, what, what is your, your background with Agile? But uh, uh, for us, uh, this is uh, some of the advantages of the benefit of changing uh, to Agile. Uh, so I will perhaps not uh, take too much time with it because we David will introduce uh, us with some more practical stuff. If you can uh, change to the next slide, uh, François. And uh, this is uh, a list of, uh, of recipes that sounds uh, for us uh, interesting. So it's not, uh, it's not limited. Uh, of course, there is more, more things to, to explore. Uh, so as you probably, I don't know if you know all this uh, methodology, but uh, we, we discovered the Kanban, a Scrum, um, 
uh, XP, it's extreme programming, lean design thinking, and uh, the idea was to to pick uh, some uh, some recipes from uh, all this uh, methodology and uh, to 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 understand if they are applicable or not applicable to the architecture industry. Uh, the, that's it. Um, can you move to the next slide? Uh, and uh, this is a small uh, slide that describes uh, what, what could be uh, an agile team because uh, be, because uh, as you know one of the we did, uh, one of the principal problems that uh, we have to set up uh, agility in uh, construction is that uh, uh, it, it is a, a team and the project is composed of many small uh, uh, companies and uh, that are distributed, they, they are not in the same place. So if we summarize, uh, there they are four, uh, four uh, roles uh, traditionally. Uh, the ones that uh, design the building, the ones that uh, is in charge of the technique, uh, the ones that build the project, and the ones that pay and that uh, decide of the program. And on, on top of this uh, role, uh, we could imagine some new roles that are uh, existing in the uh, software industry. So maybe it's not a specific role uh, maybe it's some uh, existing roles that will take uh, this role in charge, but uh, at least we need to, to one key element to, to set up Agile is to, to see uh, how it's going to practically uh, happen. Uh, so I left, um, it's a, just a short introduction. I think uh, David will explain uh, more, more in depth and with uh, some practical examples. So we are very, uh, very happy to, to listen to you, David. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. I will share my screen. Thank you, Sebastian. Good evening, everybody. Um, sorry because I, I don't speak French, uh, but I think that today there, there are people from other, other places. So, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be here. It's uh, uh, really an honor because I always envy uh, to see how in my neighbor country, France, uh, in the north, some people from the same industry uh, as, as, as mine uh, is uh, focused in something that in my own uh, territory uh, there are uh, very few uh, technicians trying to, to apply that. So now it's, I, I feel very, very glad to, to be here sharing our experiences, trying to apply uh, this uh, useful approach. So I will try not to get bored you because I know that most of you are already agile practitioners uh, and you had very nice uh, physical events going deeper into some of these um, applications. But I will try to, to show you how, in our case, uh, we have applied it and we are uh, always trying to improve uh, what we discovered and what we think that it's, uh, it's, it's useful for our activity and the activity also uh, uh, of our clients. So let's go here. Well, just uh, quickly, uh, uh, a quick presentation of uh, who I am, uh, what uh, and what we do. Um, so my name is uh, David Delgado Andre. <clears throat> I'm from this uh, corner, just uh, close to the Pyrenees Mountains. Um, and uh, I am architect and I'm being consultant. I run my own consultancy, a small one uh, near Barcelona, and we are providing services uh, locally and also uh, globally. Uh, I'm also sharing uh, part of my time as a, a lecturer in some educational programs, and I am also the uh, vice president of the design area in the Building Smart Spanish uh, chapter, and also an active uh, member and uh, uh, board member of the BIM uh, user group of Catalonia, an active uh, group <clears throat> uh, play, uh, placed in Barcelona, but now uh, acting uh, digitally as 
many of us, right? And also, I am uh, the Building Smart Spain representative in uh, a regional commission uh, with the aim of uh, designing the roadmap uh, of implementing BIM in, uh, in Catalonia. So this is my uh, background as a, as a technician. I started with BIM uh, some years ago, as uh, many of us, and I discovered uh, Agile mm, not maybe two or three years ago. I started just uh, reading, uh, like many of us, but trying uh, quickly uh, applying it uh, as much as I, I could in, in order to discover where where uh, were the benefits of all this uh, approach that it was uh, new for me uh, and I didn't see any of that in uh, my own industry. So this is how I started with all this uh, cool stuff. So today I, I want to uh, show you, uh, remember trying not to get bored you, uh, how uh, we uh, have applied uh, in a simplified way, as you will see, uh, Agile or whatever you want to call it, because in the end, uh, I think it's uh, Agile itself, uh, the, the, it, it has a lot of uh, definitions, right? For me, it's an approach as OpenBeam um, also, uh, also is. Um, and what I want to show you here is how to combine uh, Agile and uh, Open Beam from the perspective of uh, their uh, workflows. Um, so uh, it's uh, not a presentation uh, based on uh, a technical background in terms of uh, <clears throat> the technical uh, features of uh, some of the standards in Open Beam. Uh, it's about, uh, well, other standards in Open Beam, but in, in this case, it's about processes. So, uh, I will show you how to combine some of these uh, features uh, embedded in uh, the Open Beam workflows uh, and uh, at the same time combined with some of the uh, main uh, key points of the Agile approach. And the, the, the best way that I found to, to show you that it's uh, uh, explaining you uh, a real uh, workflow, in this case, uh, from one particular type of project in which we uh, are usually involved in. Uh, it's a scan to beam project, and you will see how these work, workflows are uh, uh, deployed. But first of all, Probably most of you already know uh, about uh, what is uh, Open Beam. So uh, my goal here is not to explain you uh, um, step by step what, what's that because you already probably know it. But uh, I want you uh, to show uh, and, and, and to highlight which is, in my opinion, and at least so far, uh, the main uh, key point of uh, an open beam uh, uh, workflow and it's based as you can see here in the point number three uh, mm, as the uh, or it's it's known as the reference model so uh, if, if we follow this uh, this area uh, we start mm, uh, almost always uh, creating uh, native models information models uh, let's call them as well digital prototypes. I like the word prototype because it's quite also um, <clears throat> related to, to Agile uh, approach. And uh, from those models, of course, we are creating several types of uh, outcomes, uh, traditional ones, but uh, also uh, BIM ones. In, uh, from the perspective of Open BIM, what we mostly do is uh, sharing information models based on uh, an open standard uh, data schema. Uh, in, and uh, most of you probably already know that this uh, <clears throat> transport 
um, uh, for this, this data transport, it's called IFC. So what we are doing is transferring data based on an open uh, data schema and using that information as a reference for further um, activities. Uh, but first, first of all, and it's this is not exclusive from from the open beam uh, approach. Uh, what we need to do is to define very well uh, the uses, the uses that our client, the owner, uh, is uh, requiring, uh, and uh, this is how we will create our information models, right? Uh, so we will work uh, towards those different uses, creating different information models. And of course, we will have to apply uh, some quality management strategy uh, in which we will check several information models regarding different uh, information requirements. And we will uh, check them and we will report and we will uh, track uh, if they have uh, issues or not. So we will apply uh, quality control uh, <clears throat> policy. And uh, if we find something that we need to communicate uh, to the authors of those information models, we will uh, request for a change using other standards such uh, it is the uh, BCF, and, but we will talk about, about that. So this, uh, as a summary, is the main uh, uh, approach of uh, the, the, the main feature of the open beam approach. So, uh, taking this into uh, a, a, as a background, if you go further, and as I told you, uh, we will use a uh, uh, real uh, case, and in this in in in, in, the, in this case, that the, the example is a scan to beam project in which uh, we or a consultancy uh, is providing services. Um, and, and uh, in which we have uh, our client involved uh, in some way, as you will uh, able to see. So these kind of projects, probably uh, some of you uh, are also involved with, with them. So you already know about, about, about this. And in our case, because we in our consultancy, we are uh, always working even when uh, our client is not requiring it, uh, trying to apply uh, the open beam approach as much as we can. Um, so in this case, uh, the outcomes that we are creating from our uh, modeling uh, are IFC files um, and other, other type of uh, deliverables, but mostly uh, information models based on uh, an open data schema. This is the workflow to <clears throat> show you uh, as a summary what we are doing. Nothing uh, weird, uh, quite, quite easy as uh, most of you probably <clears throat> are uh, already doing. So uh, our client is providing us uh, the point loads, uh, the scans, um, usually uh, is uh, sending us some leader files, LAS, uh, and then our uh, collaborators uh, are uh, processing those uh, point loads um, uh, uh, with the end of uh, <clears throat> customizing them uh, and uh, transforming them into a format that is suitable for our beam authoring tool. In this case, it's architect, graphics of architect. So we obtain uh, E57 uh, files, uh, point load files and um, we upload them in uh, different types of uh, cloud repositories, uh, uh, mostly based on the Microsoft uh, framework in which uh, we work usually. And then we start working as uh, you apply, applying uh, a typical uh, workflow when you are in a beam authoring environment, in this case, Articat, as I told you, and uh, we import those uh, point load files there and uh, we start uh, modeling. And this is as a brief, uh, a typical uh, scan to beam uh, workflow. And as a final uh, deliverable, we uh, provide our client with 
several IFC files uh, regarding different disciplines, uh, <clears throat> federated ones, and also the uh, uh, separated ones. I will tell you now in which part of this workflow we uh, apply uh, what we call this simplified uh, agile. And it's the uh, BIM uh, modeling um, uh, stage and also each of the different uh, the deliveries that we will, we will have during the uh, contract <clears throat> uh, with the client. These are the uh, different um, platform uh, sets that we are using. So I will try to uh, show you uh, now which are the tools from a very practical point of view. This is how uh, I, I thought this presentation, trying not to get bored, going directly to the point, what we are doing uh, in our backstage, right? So, uh, in our case, uh, we are using uh, Microsoft uh, OneDrive and Microsoft SharePoint as our uh, repositories uh, on the on the cloud. Uh, I I don't like to call to call them common data environment, but because for me, a common data environment is a serious thing, uh, and uh, not all the platforms, even some some of them that they call themselves common data environments, are. Uh, really common data environment. So let's call it uh, uh, EDMS or something like that, um, because we are using uh, usually uh, metadata <clears throat> uh, to manage and, and handle all the all these information containers. And also we are using uh, the BIM call up uh, cloud as our hub to manage uh, issues. Uh, and also uh, our uh, email <clears throat> uh, platform, in, in our case, Ma uh, Microsoft Outlook, uh, in combination uh, with this BIM Cloud uh, environment. Then, and this is our central uh, place, our central digital place, uh, we can call it uh, a collaborative hub, uh, Microsoft Teams on the core of our uh, digital activity and uh, in our case, although we could use other uh, other uh, other platforms, but uh, we decided uh, some time ago to uh, explore and start using um, a platform uh, which is uh, in the same environment uh, in, in the in the Microsoft suite, which is called. Uh, Microsoft uh, Azure uh, DevOps and in uh, particular Azure Boards. Um, and all of these uh, four uh, platform uh, sets are combined uh, using a trigger or different triggers. Uh, in this case, also uh, within this uh, um, environment, the Microsoft environment, and it's this tool. Uh, <clears throat> formerly uh, called uh, Microsoft Flow, and uh, right now uh, they changed it to Power Art Automate, and we are using it to trigger uh, actions uh, to automate some of the steps uh, that are usually uh, done in our uh, uh, regular activity. So uh, for, um, uh, the, the, the movements uh, from uh, that, that there are uh, within this environment uh, 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 copying, moving, uh, removing the different information containers, different files uh, are triggered and uh, are those movements are uh, communicated uh, automatically here in our collaborative hub. Mm -hmm. uh, the same here with the uh, issues uh, that we are managing uh, in our BIM uh, cloud environment, uh, which are typically uh, informed uh, directly using our email. And then we are using uh, the input that we receive from our email and uh, using this trigger, everything is 
communicated efficiently uh, in our collaborative hub. And here is when we will uh, or we do uh, connect our uh, agile approach, as I will deploy in the next slides. And this is how uh, you can see, uh, like an overview in this case, uh, probably um, some of you already know this environment, especially uh, during these uh, COVID uh, months, uh, right? Uh, Microsoft Teams. So for us, Microsoft Teams, it's not just a, a, a corporative uh, chat. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's more than that, it's, it's, it's a hub. Uh, which uh, allows us to combine different other environments, not just the Microsoft ones, uh, from other places. So in this case, what we uh, do here is include uh, and to combine uh, all the um, <clears throat> uh, different uh, views and uh, viewports that we have in uh, our Azure uh, DevOps environment. Uh, but this is from the uh, user perspective in terms of check uh, <clears throat> uh, quickly what's happening. That's why we have these uh, different tabs here and we have some tab to see what's happening uh, in our project in terms of uh, project management, but uh, applying a shadow, as you will see. Um, but usually, usually uh, we are managing uh, internally uh, the Azure uh, environment directly from the web browser or even combining uh, with some uh, actions from here, uh, from uh, the same Microsoft Teams. I don't know if there is some question from, from someone. But you can comment, it. but uh, yeah, uh, it's your, is, is the dashboard for all the users or uh, only for the managers? This is, uh, as, you will, uh, as you will see in the next slide, uh, this is for the uh, uh, production team. So uh, we don't have the client here, uh, but because the, the so we communicate with the client, it's through the Microsoft Teams uh, with another team, as you, I, I will show you. So, but it depends on the, in, in some projects, uh, we could uh, filter uh, managing permissions uh, within the Azure um, uh, DevOps environment, uh, also the, the client. But as you, uh, as you will see, this is a simplified Agile approach in which even we combine some of the typical Agile roles as product owner and Scrum Master, it's the same uh, guy, which is in, uh, usually me. Uh, so, well, but yeah, we could, we could do that, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, and you, you create uh, all this, uh... Yes, it's, it's totally customizable. In this case, it's uh, totally adapted to uh, this uh, particular type of projects. And you can have different even processes uh, adapted to the uh, other types of uh, projects. Uh, in, in this case, for example, uh, we have different tasks uh, regarding the, the specifically the scan to beam uh, activity. Uh, and then you can create different checklists and, and so on, as you will see. So, how is our simplification in terms of uh, roles uh, from the Agile approach? Uh, there is an end client, and fortunately there is one <laughs> that wants to pay uh, all of us <laughs> for our activity. Uh, but in this case, with this type of project, we never see and we never uh, get in touch with this end client. But is there, and this end client, in some points of our uh, process, uh, sent uh, us some feedback, which is totally necessary. And this is something that uh, uh, we need to, uh, to, to, to handle it uh, in, in, a, in a quite particular way, especially with the one that will be in touch with your end client, client which is not us. And who is that guy? Uh, so it's in the end our client. It's the client who is hiring our services. In this case, it's a, a, a project manager management company. Uh, they are also doing laser scanning. Um, 
And these are the guys that are in touch with the end client, the one who requires our services. In this case, are uh, sometimes are asset owners, and in other cases are different architectural or engineering firms. And we never see them, okay? So where is the agile here? Well, it's in all this workflow, but as you will see, let me deploy all the diagram. Uh, here it's um, our company, uh, a, small, a small one in which there is the product owner. And at the same time, let's call it, although we are, are not applying a Scrum, uh, uh, the role of who is managing uh, internally all these uh, agile uh, workflows, steps, who is handling the different uh, artifacts and so on, uh, it's the Scrum Master. In this case, it's just one person. Uh, uh, it's, it's, my, it's, it's me. And then we have our uh, scan to be uh, team in which uh, I am also involved with them. Uh, uh, depending on which is the size of the project, of course, this team is uh, bigger or, or smaller. And then we have another important um, uh, uh, member here, which are different stakeholders. In this case, it's uh, what uh, we call point to point managers. Uh, they are collaborators of our company that are uh, processing those point loads and they are in touch with uh, our client, but at the same time with us. And this is just to have the idea of uh, which is our uh, um, uh, diagram in terms of how we interact uh, each other. Okay. But what is really happening? Uh, when we start uh, working, and I will try to show this in terms of uh, feedback, um, uh, in terms of feedback, and already using some of uh, the terminology that is uh, used uh, in, in the agile approach, right? So here in the uh, y axis, we have the product increment, and in the x uh, axis, we have time. So, well, we start working, we uh, have a, uh, a first sprint, a first cycle, and uh, what we always do uh, is creating a first delivery, what we call prototype. And what is a prototype in our case? Remember that we are uh, talking about the scan to beam project. So it's just a small part, uh, the most representative uh, of uh, our asset, sometimes it's a building, sometimes it's uh, an infrastructure and a building, it depends, uh, sometimes it's uh, also the landscape. Uh, so we are creating a prototype uh, in order to obtain the first uh, feedback from our end client, the yellow one, remember, which is part from us, you know? So what we do here, so we create and a standby, so our production, it's totally stopped during uh, some days, sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's two weeks. Usually it's two weeks because the end client is uh, requiring us, and it, they are very strict, but uh, they are not fast. So we decide to stop our production uh, until we receive the uh, end client's feedback, which is the yellow one. But that feedback, remember, is uh, filtered by our client. And our client is translating all that feedback and it's giving us our feedback. Uh, using which way? So here is when we are start using uh, the open beam approach as well. Because our client uh, also is um, <clears throat> included uh, in our beam cloud, uh, beam cloud cloud uh, platform. Uh, and uh, they are uh, also beam experienced, although they are project managers and uh, laser scanners, uh, and they are uh, using uh, the models that we share, in this case, IFC files, and they are uh, <clears throat> sending us uh, the, the end client feedback through that platform. 
uh, whenever it's possible. In some cases, it's just on a spreadsheet in which the client, the end client, uh, try to uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, try to split the different um, the different issues that uh, they found in the prototype, or the different requirements that initially uh, were in the contract, but now uh, they decided to adapt to change. Uh, the, the typical things that usually uh, happen after the end client uh, check a prototype, okay? So after that point, the first thing that we do is uh, trying to fix the first issues that uh, we have received. Um, and we have received them uh, through BCF. Well, uh, we have a product increment, which is not uh, <clears throat> progressing the point in which we uh, <clears throat> uh, left uh, our information model in the first cycle, right? Because we had to go uh, backwards, uh, remodeling or changing whatever we have done and uh, that it was not uh, aligned with the end client requirements. And probably we have some new even requirements, right? So once we have uh, fixed that, we create another feedback from our site towards our client. Uh, so some BCF files. But, but in this case, these uh, issues uh, are not sent to the end client. This is uh, kept uh, in this first circle between our client and our company, okay? So once this is validated, we start progressing, uh, progressing the product increment until the end of the sprint number two, we uh, produce uh, new outcomes, new IFCs, and the same. Uh, what is this uh, time here? As you can see here, it's in green. So after the spring number two, uh, we uh, keep progressing because we still don't have, because they need some time to analyze what we have delivered, right? So we are progressing uh, with the next part of the building, the asset or whatever. But in some particular time, usually it's four or five days, we receive uh, the feedback from our client in BCF again. So again, we are going backwards. Uh, this, the length uh, of this uh, backwards uh, increment is uh, longer or shorter depending on the number of issues that uh, the, our client found in our information models, right? And after that, the same process as here, we produce VCF uh, and we communicate those issues and we uh, keep progressing. And then again and again, depending on how many cycles we have. So this is generally how we uh, interact. And here is where we can uh, see in the background uh, the open BIM approach in terms of workflow. So it's not, it's nothing complicated. It's just uh, what we are using here uh, in terms of communication, it's a standard called BCF, BIM collaboration format, and the deliverables that we are sharing with our clients are based in an open data uh, schema. That's all. The rest, well, you could do the same uh, uh, using another type of approach as for example, a closed uh, beam one, you know? So this is in a, a, as a brief of how we are working with our clients here. Let's proceed. Talking about uh, artef artifacts and uh, events, uh, how we are applying uh, them in our uh, basic or simplified workflow. So let's talk about the product backlog, right? So. Um, uh, we are trying uh, to use, well, because sometimes we like to uh, remind uh, some of the theory uh, behind uh, uh, the Agile approach, although for some of our even uh, team members, sometimes it's a bit, uh, because I received uh, something, why you created this long sentence here as a team team, we want to model the first uh, floor and part of the ground floor and first floor so that we can produce an intermediate model and end client validation. So, well, it seems that it's 
too much for a, a daily practice, but uh, after months working this way, uh, you realize that your team it's progressively getting used to all this stuff, you know, which in the very beginning it's quite uh, new for uh, many people in our industry. Uh, and they start understanding what is really a user story, which is usually a terminology that uh, in the very beginning it's something like it comes from another galaxy, right? So, well, uh, we, we could call it another, uh, for using other words like objective or whatever, but uh, we like to uh, keep it uh, using the user story uh, uh, term. Uh, so here we have uh, a list of uh, what we decided uh, to establish as uh, user stories, and in this case uh, are related to some of the objectives that our client has, uh, because they expect that at the end of uh, each of our cycles, they receive some particular and quite clear deliverable. And in this case, it's an IFC model. So um, at the end of our cycles, uh, the, 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 pro the product increment will be uh, in the shape of an IFC model. So for us, this is the main objective of our kind, to receive that, to check uh, in the first cycle, which is the, uh, the quality in which we will produce the rest of deliverables, but in the rest of, of screens also, they will be able to check the real uh, increment of each of our uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, screens. So this is called, uh, uh, how, how, we, how we see all this. This is in a, in a backlog um, uh, view, but we can see that also uh, uh, with, with, with different uh, Kanban uh, boards, as you will see. This is inside the user story. Uh, so it's a product backlog item. Uh, in our case, we, uh, um, we create two types of product back backlog items, user stories and also uh, issues, but not the beam call-up issues, other type of issues as you will see. And this is how it is the, but, well, this is not aimed to, to be a, a tutorial how to use Azure boards, but you can see how we can customize and we can create, for example, um, uh, for the readiness of each of the user stories, uh, the definition of ready, uh, shared for different, for all the user stories that we have in this type of projects. But uh, if you have some other projects, you can uh, define different templates, right? Uh, so in this case, this is quite, um, uh, let's call it uh, generic. Is Daddy? there a question from someone? Yeah. Could you explain uh, what is the, the sentence uh, objective? Could be interesting uh, to, yeah. to explain our work uh, user stories. Yeah, in this case, uh, is if I, if I read this, so as a, in this case, user, so in this case, it's the BIM team. So as a BIM team, what we want is to produce an information model. Hmm? So we model and we specify uh, in this case, which is the scope of that uh, modeling for that particular um, sprint or not. In our case, because the projects are usually two months, two months and a half. As, and as you will see, the, the, the size of the sprints are usually one week, uh, very short. Uh, so, Usually it depends on the size of the, the building, but usually it's one floor, one model. But in some cases, as this one, uh, we wanted to include more floors, more uh, levels in this prototype. So the objective is that uh, we will be able to produce uh, this intermediate prototype in order to obtain the, 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 the initial feedback from the from the VM client. Otherwise, we cannot. Uh, um, uh, go uh, into the next springs um, be, be, because uh, well uh, we will uh, we, we would be producing information models but probably not aligned with uh, uh, the feedback uh, from from our client. But we 
don't go deeper into the description of these uh, objectives. Uh, because we, we have to go very fast uh, uh, and as much uh, information we include uh, here, <laughs> uh, as much time uh, we are here managing any change that we have to include uh, to these user stories. So we decided to keep uh, just the title of the user story as the description of uh, our objective. But this is totally adapted to this particular case, a scan to beam uh, project. In other types of projects, uh, of course, the, the, the objective could, could, could be, uh, for example, uh, 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 if you are doing a, not a scan to beam, uh, uh, a design project, uh, so let's keep the budget uh, from for the um, <clears throat> underground uh, floors um, uh, below some particular uh, amount of money or whatever, right? So as a lean team, we want to produce a model in which the some parameters uh, can track the uh, price of uh, some particular IFC uh, spaces, for example. Mm -hmm. So this kind of stuff, it's uh, it's it's how we handle uh, objectives usually. Yeah. Okay? The difficult part is is to have the right size of the user stories, not too much work uh, on it, in it. Or... Yeah, usually as as you will see with the sprint planning, uh, we can have two three user stories per sprint, not uh, not many more. Okay. Okay, so for example, uh, you mean uh, one user story, it's, it could be included in one week of work for a team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so sometimes we have even two uh, because some stories are shared um, uh, uh, between two springs um, uh, because, uh, uh, because the nature of the building, uh, sometimes you cannot uh, the, 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 the goal was to produce a whole level and then at the end of that sprint uh, you already knew when you were designing the sprint planning that uh, your team is not able to finish that uh, level. So it's a, uh, an objective shared uh, during two sprints um, or one sprint and a half, uh, something like that. Okay. And then uh, here you also, well, uh, this is called, in this case, uh, Azure Boards uh, works, but in other platforms it's quite similar. You define to which spring belongs this user story. And this is also quite interesting. You can define also different areas. Uh, you can uh, customize which is uh, your approach using those areas. In our case, it's about the type of activity, production, uh, audit, uh, preparation, whatever. Okay, but you can, uh, for example, we are also working in some uh, hospital projects uh, and it's quite interesting to use uh, areas, uh, also using particular areas in uh, that building, uh, uh, different than uh, levels or stories. So you can split uh, your <clears throat> uh, objectives regarding different areas on the building, okay? And then here you can also establish the relationships between this uh, objective and the different tasks that you will have. Uh, uh, here in this case we have uh, child tasks, but you can also uh, define uh, totally horizontal uh, relationships uh, or other type of uh, relationships, mm, uh, not your your article ones. Okay. And in this case we have also an epic. For for us the epic. Uh, is the project itself because uh, it's not a, uh, usually they are not as uh, I mentioned a very very big projects so two three months of work so for us uh, the epic is uh, the project itself and uh, under uh, that epic we already have uh, our uh, our user stories in some cases we also use uh, features as another of uh, the product backlog uh, items, but in this case, it's, it's so clear what we have to produce uh, in terms of uh, how we 
uh, have to produce it, uh, that we are going directly to the user story. What is not so clear, and this is why, and let me come uh, here again, the, especially the end client, when is uh, reaching uh, our uh, team again, uh, usually it's quite, sur uh, it's a surprise always, because although we have quite well defined uh, in our contract, which is the expectation of our client, once they see the prototype, usually because the end client, the type of end client that we have, it's not a BIM experienced one, uh, they require BIM, but because the level of maturity is still not uh, quite uh, big, uh, they don't really know what they will obtain. Uh, you know, that's why for us it's very important this uh, step, and especially all this uh, lack of production here, because uh, after this we have to re-adapt uh, all our um, <clears throat> user stories. Uh, in terms of the scope, uh, because usually they require us to uh, change the level of definition, especially because they are quite focused on the um, on how the uh, 2D uh, drawings and the layouts are produced from a BIM environment and this kind of stuff. Okay. Do you have only one time uh, end client uh, feedbacks? Sorry, C can you repeat it? Yeah, sorry. Do, do you have only one time and uh, clients' feedbacks only at the beginning, or you have a lot of this type of feedbacks uh, later? This is the only feedback that we have from the end client uh, yeah. until the end of the project. This is how it's possible. It's not possible because we we have tried to increase the frequency of uh, feedback with our end client. This because, but in several projects uh, and with different clients, not just with one, uh, doing a scan to beam, especially, uh, we usually are not able to obtain end uh, clients' uh, feedback more often, which is a which is a, a, a real pain in our ass, <laughs> really, because the end client, the the, the, the the feedback that we that we obtain from our client, they are quite experienced, also. Uh, within these kind of projects, but every end client is different. So no matter how experienced is our, our client with this time, type of projects, that uh, every end client will have different requirements uh, at the end of our journey, right? So, so this, yeah, yeah. The first iteration is just to validate the, the exactly. prototype, so probably the... the, the exactly. Uh, and we we, uh, we usually do it uh, well uh, as I will explain. Uh, our sprints are one week. Uh, sometimes this spring it's two weeks, depending on how uh, this prototype should be in terms of, of to obtain this final validation, as you mentioned. Uh, but uh, this is the, the, the important thing: is to obtain this yellow arrow here uh, as uh, soon as possible. Sometimes what, what happened, uh, because the, the, the life is very nice when it's in a slide, but the reality <laughs> is that uh, this time, sometimes uh, it's getting uh, longer and longer. And we are consuming the time of our contract. And we don't have any kind of feedback from our client regarding anything, right? So we take the risk of jumping into the screen number two. But we cannot do that in all of our projects because otherwise the end client maybe at the end of our process is, oh, where is my model or where are my models? I could say, and I say sometimes, where is your feedback, right? <laughs> so, well, it depends on the uh, size of project, type of client, but usually uh, we are quite concerned of creating this lack of production here uh, as long as uh, uh, it, 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 it has to be. So you have a question of Jean-Luc, why can't you go from sprint one to sprint two directly and finish increment on sprint three? So that's what you explain. Well, because then, then, then the impact to our team in terms of production uh, and uh, to uh, achieve what is uh, 
uh, and uh, with the user stories already defined uh, in our uh, screen planning, uh, it's, it's not affordable. The, the, the problem is with the blue arrows. If we go directly to the screen number two, and suddenly uh, there is this big yellow here, uh, then uh, we already have all this green uh, product increment that probably it's wrong mm -hmm. because it's not aligned with what our client is requiring us. Here, as you could see, we took the, the, the risk of start progressing, start uh, uh, um, uh, creating more product increment because we already had uh, the feedback from the end client. So here is just uh, the feedback from our client in terms of uh, quality control of some uh, internal small issues that we have when we are usually uh, modeling some door, window, or whatever other construction element, right? But not in terms of level of definition, uh, which is our main concern, because once you have used two, three cycles of work, and then you obtain the end client's feedback, uh, you are totally crashed. And one, one thing that is quite different from the IT industry is that normal, usually you, you are working in a, on a few projects. So when you have this standby uh, stage, uh, you can work on uh, other projects. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in, 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 in here it's not a 3D diagram, but the truth is <laughs> we are also doing that. Uh, for example, next week in our company, we have uh, one week and a half of lack of productions from some particular project. And uh, what uh, we do is some other uh, activities uh, from other uh, projects uh, in which we have different uh, client pressures or uh, different types of uh, projects that are not scanned to beam or something like that. Okay. Let me go because maybe I am out of time. What about the uh, new requirements that we receive from the client? Uh, and from a practical point of view, we are using also the uh, Azure uh, boards environment uh, to uh, create uh, those uh, new requirements as an issue, in this case, as a request for change. Um, and uh, we can see uh, those new requirements. So my team can see those requirements directly here in this dashboard. Uh, you can define how big you want to see this screen, whatever. It's time. It's, it's a question of customizing all this dashboard, okay? And uh, we include in, uh, in, in that work item uh, information, sometimes it's a PDF, sometimes it's a link to our Microsoft SharePoint uh, EDMS, um, uh, defining which is the new requirement. In this case, uh, the client uh, required us uh, differently from what uh, he required in, uh, in, the, in the contract to include the uh, structs here from this structure. Uh, so, well, uh, what we usually do is start uh, creating a small, in this case, piece of prototype of this new requirement, sending it uh, to our client. But our uh, client is not sending it. Uh, to the end client again uh, in this case, because our end client already knows uh, how we perform in terms of quality, uh, because uh, they already could check it with the initial prototype. So in this case, it's just uh, like a new instruction. Hey guys, include these uh, structural elements uh, that were not in our initial requirements, okay? Here is how we use uh, also the Azure boards uh, for the sprint planning. As you can see here, uh, in some sprints, we have even three or four, uh, depending on the, on, the, on the size of what we have to model, in this case, uh, per each of the sprints. Here we have that lack of production as well, uh, and um, the team can, can see that. What we usually do uh, is creating a PDF of uh, this sprint planning directly from here, trying to be also a bit lean, and 
sharing it with our uh, client in order to um, <clears throat> we upload it to the uh, repository that we share with the the, uh, the, the, the shared area with our client uh, and uh, the client always can check our screen planning. Uh, and we, if we have some update in our screen planning, uh, we update uh, that document as well. In this case, as I mentioned, our sprints are usually one week. And uh, usually what we uh, have established is the, uh, the mm, uh, meeting with the end client, sorry, with the end client, with our client is on Tuesdays and our uh, internal meeting to do the sprint review and retrospective it's on Mondays. You have a bit of delay uh, in terms of uh, preparing the final uh, deliverables and the final uh, delivery for our client. And so uh, how, how many hours for this me these meetings? Yeah, usually the with the, the spring goal event, it's one hour and a half or two with, uh, with the client. Um, less than one hour with this kind of projects, totally uh, uh, unaffordable, but usually one hour and a half or two. Uh, and the spring review and retrospective, it's from uh, 30 minutes to one hour, no more than one hour, because then the impact to our small team, it's uh, too big. Uh, so we need to use every hour of our uh, days uh, for production. So, uh, but, but, but usually it's difficult because we start uh, like working instead of uh, reviewing and this is my work sometimes to keep uh, that uh, to, to keep our team fit fit to time for those kind of meetings okay what is the size of your team uh, the size of my team it's from two to four or five depending okay so it's a super small team and they are but all for, for agile it's more than more, more, more than suitable uh, because bigger than that, uh, it starts to to be a bit more complicated, especially with people that, for example, my team learn uh, 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 about Agile from me uh, directly. And as you can imagine, with some short uh, uh, um, presentations and directly hands-on. <laughs> so. Uh, usually we, we have new collaborators, so we have um, created uh, some uh, short uh, videos in order to, uh, um, in order to learn uh, easier uh, without, the, without me, okay? Okay. Jean-Luc say, I just Scrum said is max nine people, effective is, is five, so you are near the... <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. <clears throat> this is something to not just for our team, uh, for for everybody. You, you can have yeah. more more stuff if you want. <laughs> yeah, because the truth is, I am the first interested on uh, creating an, uh, a part of the industry uh, which is uh, every time more aligned and aligned to these kind of approaches. So that's why I am trying always to explain how we are doing it or how we think that others could do it and this kind of stuff. And it's it's very uh, useful to share all these experiences. And then the spring uh, backlog. This is how this, uh, in particular, this uh, tool Azure Boards is uh, uh, sharing uh, the information uh, regarding uh, tasks. Um, the truth, if I am honest, we usually don't use the Kanban uh, board to for, for this. Um, uh, in the past, we were using Hello. Ah, we lost David. In, uh, in the page. Okay. Hello? Okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now it's okay. So yeah. Okay, just... sorry. I, I, uh, I, I lost the, the connection. So we honestly don't use too much, uh, just for your information, the visual uh, interface 
regarding uh, um, the, the movement of our tasks. So, uh, in this case, Azure Boards, it's quite uh, efficient, changing the state of each of our tasks directly uh, as a parameter uh, when we are inside uh, our tasks. And it's quite uh, fast. What we are using a lot is the uh, overview dashboard, the one that you saw here. Let me go back. Here. Here for us, it's the uh, tab that we are using the most because um, at a glance, you can obtain uh, the full picture of your current progress here. Uh, that's why we are not using too much the visual Kanban board. But this does not mean that a visual Kanban board is uh, an unuseful thing. It's useful, but for us, it's not, uh, well, we are not using it. Let's go further. So here you can check uh, in which spring you are, and then you can, um, sometimes we use that uh, in order to justify some of our progress to our client, uh, because we are preparing some minute notes from uh, our meetings, and sometimes we use these visual um, uh, um, boards uh, to create some reports for uh, our client, but we are not using them internally. Okay, and so so you say that, that this board is uh, sharing with the client? Uh, sometimes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We and, and this is about transparency. Uh, that's uh, why uh, uh, what we what we don't share it's all the conversations and discussions that we have uh, within each of these work items. Okay, so what here you can see just which is the task. Uh, and which is the progress of uh, uh, all uh, these, uh, in this case, this user story here or these other uh, user stories. But they cannot see uh, the internal discussions as I can not uh, see as well what they are discussing uh, within their uh, companies, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Did they understand uh, easily this uh, kind of interface? Because it's, it's not the. Uh using regularly in the construction industry. So, so, so you have to to learn them how to use it. Does it take a lot of time or? The learning, the learning curve to use Azure boards, uh, yeah. do you mean? Or this kind uh, of? No, no, no. I was concerned about this because usually it's not a, it's not a tool that, as you mentioned, uh, is, is used in other, <laughs> in other fields of uh, industry uh, uh, from just just developers. But the, the truth is when I um, uh, put over the table this tool uh, in my team, uh, in the beginning, I have to be honest that it was a bit, uh, well, what the hell David is trying to <laughs> include in our uh, usual activity, right? Okay. But in one week, in one week, even they feel comfortable um, uh, using all this. So, for for me, it was a, a, a nice uh, discovery because it's within the Microsoft environment and it has a lot of uh, um, efficient connections in terms of triggers, automation, and so on. But of course, uh, people who is uh, updating this tool, it's not thinking about. Uh, AEC technicians, <laughs> because even you cannot customize some things uh, that they are uh, uh, talking about coding and so on, which we don't uh, usually do. Uh, okay, but I, uh, for us, it's and not just for us, even for other uh, projects in which we involve uh, as well the client, uh, it's quite interesting because you can also combine uh, Microsoft Excel as an input. Um, uh, gate to uh, include uh, data directly to these work items and so on. But this is out of the scope of this short presentation. Yeah, you have congratulations from Jean-Luc. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Can you repeat? 
You have congratulations from Jean-Luc for, for this work. Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, what about the, what usually in Scrum, they call it daily Scrum. So we are not doing another meeting because in this kind of small projects, uh, what it's chatting every single day and especially and more intensively uh, at the first time in the in the morning uh, we are uh, chatting intensively uh, among our team uh, to uh, <clears throat> uh, about uh, the instructions of uh, the tasks that they uh, have uh, uh, to produce during that uh, that day and this is what we are doing and we are using the different channels created here in within the, uh, the Microsoft Teams uh, and usually it's working uh, very, very well. We have channel preparation, native modeling, uh, here it's for audit and coordination. Here we have a channel in which we receive automatically uh, the copy of the emails that we are receiving from the Beam Cloud platform. So even you then need to go to the web browser to see what our client needs uh, um, uh, uh, providing us uh, in terms of uh, issue tracking and quality control that they are doing. Uh, so this is very, very uh, comfortable for us uh, to keep our minds totally focused here on Teams and in this case, Graphics of Artica, being called Zoom and the tools that we are using. Okay, here is a task from Insight, in which we can include uh, per each of our task instances, uh, the different uh, definitions of DOM. In our case, because this is a quite simple uh, type of project, uh, we usually share the different, the, the same definition of DOM checklist, but, that, and this is created um, uh, as a list in the task uh, template. But then each uh, of us, each of the team members can include uh, additional um, subtasks uh, within this uh, definition of DOM. But this is at the level of instance uh, using one, right? Uh, because each task can have some particular uh, subtasks uh, uh, to, to achieve the final result, right? And what we are doing, and this is quite um, uh, relevant for us, it's trying to keep as much as we can all the discussions related to that task, not using Microsoft Teams channels, just using the um, uh, asynchronous uh, uh, discussion um, uh, board that we have here inside the task. This uh, increases the uh, quality of our traceability uh, when we want to uh, go back uh, and to check uh, what uh, revision we share for that particular screen or whatever. Uh, which type of conversations or discussions we have in these channels, the ones that are not related specifically to one particular task. As easy as that. So, well, here also at the level of task, we can define activity area, screens, parent, uh, product back, backlog item, uh, item, which is in this, in this case a uh, user story. Mm -hmm. And here is the, the example of what I mentioned uh, that we receive automatically uh, some, uh, not all of them, because the ones that are already um, using this kind of uh, issue tracking hubs as Bing Collab or other, other ones, Bing Track, uh, you know that they are uh, producing a lot of emails, especially if your notification uh, settings are uh, established that you receive all the emails. So we can create a rule in which uh, the Power Automate uh, <clears throat> uh, search for some particular words within the body of uh, that email, and then they filter uh, uh, only the uh, issues that are created from our client. And then those ones are the ones that we see in this particular Microsoft Teams. And here, the good thing is that the links to 
uh, uh, the website of that Beam Colab Cloud are kept here. So we just click and we go directly to the web browser if we want to edit that issue to add some comment or whatever. And this is the workflow usually, Artica, IFC, BCF, Beam Colab Cloud, uh, Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Power Automate, and Microsoft Teams. Here we are within, uh, not within, sorry, uh, inside one of those issues. Uh, so our beam related uh, issues in which as a milestone, we include the different cycles that we have. So, and this is quite useful even for our client in the, in, with the first projects of our client, which is not agile experienced in that moment. Now they are, they already are a bit. <laughs> Uh, they, of course, ask us, what the hell is a sprint? Uh, uh, and, uh, well, uh, we had to explain them, but now it's, uh, well, curious or it's nice to see how our client is uh, easily and comfortably uh, adding uh, issues, new ones, or replying to other ones that are related to previous uh cycles and this kind of stuff and this is related to the diagram that you saw in in previous slides right when we are receiving feedback but we are already in another spring we are receiving an issue but we know exactly we can filter which issues are related to previous sprints and this is quite uh, useful and even if we want to create some other customized parameters we can do it we have custom one custom two custom three where so it's quite granular, uh, the way how we can adapt this open beam approach to our uh, Agile one. And as you can see, it's quite simple. We are not creating something sophisticated. And also we can establish different layers, layers of uh, visibility. In these cases, uh, issues that are shared only within uh, our company, but in some cases we decide to elevate those issues uh, with the client uh, and vice versa. Uh, so uh, this is also quite uh, useful. But, but well, this is a feature of this uh, uh, platform. And uh, here it's just another example, and I am finishing, sorry, uh, how we apply uh, uh, the, quali the quality control uh, strategy uh, based on OpenBeam and also with the Agile tasks. Um, in this case, uh, also using the uh, BCF files, in this case, using the API uh, connection. So we are not uh, sharing files. We are not sharing BCF files. Uh, what we do at the end of our spring is exporting all these issues uh, and archiving them using BCF uh, 2.1. Uh, but we are not uh, um, applying any file changing uh, strategy with our client. We're uh, uh, directly using an API connection, okay? Uh, and this is the typical uh, type of uh, feedback that our client, the project manager on laser scanning, is uh, sending us. So uh, in this case, a door frame is not so big, please, uh, whatever, okay? And we are um, implementing in it in our uh, next uh, product uh, increment. A sprint review and retrospective, as I mentioned, uh, we have a particular channel to um, uh, to have to have those um, special meetings every Monday. It's totally scheduled. And well, this is what uh, we usually do. We share the screens and we work as all of us, we had to do during all these, especially all these months. And uh, here is are the, uh, the meetings that we have with the client. Usually with the client, what we have is another team, different one. So uh, we have a shared area, shared communication area with our client, also within this Microsoft Teams uh, environment. Uh, they are considered guests and we are uh, the members. And we schedule things here, we uh, share deliverables using a, a private channel and the final ones uh, that are already validated, 
are shared in another uh, private channel. Why they are private? This is not for some uh, privacy uh, uh, requirement. This is about uh, a behavior that Microsoft SharePoint has in terms of uh, creating a SharePoint site. And this is quite interesting and uh, important when you apply a metadata uh, strategy within your document management, which we, we, uh, we do. Uh, and then you can share uh, our metadata policy uh, uh, through different uh, sites. And this is quite uh, interesting and it's like a never ending story in terms of automation. So uh, that's why uh, many of us, we are working Saturdays and Sundays because the, the, we are always thinking on how to automate some of these internal steps uh, uh, and once you know that you have some parameters quite useful uh, to uh, create uh, new steps in your roles, right? So, but well, uh, step by step, uh, easily, uh, otherwise uh, our client is not uh, quite happy. Are you winning and, sometimes at the end? Yes, and uh, we have reached the end of the session. I hope that uh it was not boring for you and i will be glad to have discussion with all of you if, if you want yeah thank you very much david it was very interesting and very rich uh i saw some of your presentation a few a few months or a few years ago probably you 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 were using trello so now yeah. you, you are using a much more uh, uh efficient organization so uh, for you, if you, yes, your, your tool are very uh, technical. So for, for other users, uh, what are you, uh, did, did, did you say that Trello was, uh, was interesting and uh, why uh, did you change from Trello to another software? Well, uh, as you, you, you probably already know Trello, uh, Trello, it's a quite neutral platform that you can turn that platform into something also quite sophisticated. Uh, so it's not about, uh, it's quite versatile uh, in, in terms of uh, creating something that uh, can reach also a similar level to what we uh, have seen here uh, with Azure Boards. But honestly, the amount of work that you have to do to turn that into something uh, more uh, efficient. Uh, in this case, uh, well, uh, I had a clear idea when I discovered this environment, although in the very beginning I was a bit, uh, well, uh, skeptical and uh, get deeper into that environment because, well, I am I am an architect, I am a, an, an IT technician. Uh, I saw that this environment is uh, for people who is involved in uh, software development and maybe we start uh, implementing things. So uh, doing an investment, uh, because this is a lot of time, so it's a lot of money, uh, all, this, uh, all this stuff that you have seen here. Uh, uh, and if we are doing it uh, in a wrong direction, uh, well, we, we lost the money, right? So uh, I was skeptical in the very beginning, but well, you know if you are right or not, just, just trying, uh, trying an error. So we started with uh, this kind of projects. In our case, it's I think it's easier because we are a small. The size of our projects are small as well, and it's easy to start uh, testing this kind of uh, implementations. I can understand that uh, with uh, other size of projects. Uh, well, you 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 need to define. Uh, and uh, 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 um, some kind of uh, a well-defined um, prototype um, to start uh, testing these kind of implementations. Otherwise, it can be a mess. Yeah. So, but you, we can. Everybody can develop this kind of approach, but without uh, you can use Trello or Azure, or, but it's less uh, automation with less automation and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Less sophistication, but it, it could work with a with a more uh, simple tool. Okay, and uh, Jean-Luc say, what is the critical size to get this IT infrastructure? 
So for the you, it's for five people. Yeah, it's what we mentioned uh, before. Uh, with more people, the problem is when you are in an environment, and it's the type of environment that we have, that it's not agile experienced. Uh, as as uh, the, the bigger is the team, uh, the bigger is the problem that you have in terms of training, uh, failures, uh, and uh, um, the, the efficiency of your performance. So. Uh, three, four people. Uh, it's, it's. I think it's quite suitable. Uh, but of course, then you have to split uh, the product increment if you are able to do it uh, due to the nature of your project. Of course. I have another question about that. But Jean-Luc, uh, precise what it's the size of construction. So it's the size of the project. So it's for yeah. for you. It's not for so big project. Size of project uh, depends on the type of uh, beam activity. In this case. Uh, as uh, you could see, the scan to beam, uh, which means in our case, the scan to, the, the scan to beam it's uh, usually uh, end for the operations uh, stage or for further refurbishments. So our client uh, or an asset manager uh, or um, uh, an architect who wants to uh, start a, a project. So what we are doing is creating and as built information model. So in our case, of course, size is important, but we have, de we have developed uh, buildings for uh, more than 15,000 uh, square meters, uh, and you can even create even more. Uh, and usually uh, is around three, four months, but depending on, uh, of course, the, 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 the size of your company, the type of your team members, and so on. Um, if you mean other type of beam uh, users, then of course uh, the answer could be quite different uh, because uh, the workflows in which you are involved are not so simple as uh, we have defined here. As you could see, I just have the our client and the end client, which is waiting for the <laughs> some information model at the end of those two three months. But if you are involved in some other projects in which, for example, construction stage, imagine that we are applying this uh, to create some as-built models from point clouds uh, um, to, uh, to, to use those models during the construction stage. So then the speed of our performance, so our performance uh, uh, would be very different. So the sprint planning uh, would be different. So the agile strategy uh, would be totally different. I would like to show uh, in another occasion how we are trying also to apply to these uh, stages, which is also very interesting because the workflows are totally different. And it's also big, it's also open beam, but the feedback here, the, 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 the frequency, it's, it's totally different. Uh, as you could see here, we have to change the end client. Even the client don't want to, <laughs> to, to, to see us until the end of our project. But in other uh, environments, uh, the, 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 the end client is uh, every day there, you know? So, so yeah, this is related to uh, another question uh, from Dirk Jacobs. Uh, he said, does the system as a tool influence the discipline on the project? So, so yes. Let me read again this question because it seems an interesting one. Uh, does the system, as a tool, what, uh, what, what do you mean with system? Uh, do you mean the? You can open your mic if you want to, to, to influence the discipline on the project. You're creating a, a framework of communication and of collaboration. Does this uh, motivate people to come with the right uh, answers, the right solutions, and, and so on? And I, I, now I understand, and it's uh, a very, very interesting uh, question. Uh, but uh, correct me if I if I'm wrong uh, with what I understood. Um, in this case, because of course it's totally. Uh, Digital, the communication is, uh, we, don't, we don't have physical meetings at all. Uh, we didn't even have it uh, before 
the COVID uh, crisis. So we were already working like that. But this uh, environment, in our case, uh, especially not the Azure boards, especially the BCFs, uh, mm, became one well, a, a, a nice surprise because uh, for us internally we were already using them and they were quite useful for us to for our quality assurance uh, tasks and also the quality control ones. So internally we didn't have any doubt. The doubt was uh, in incorporating our client using this kind of um, asynchronous because in the end it's asynchronous. They send us uh, their feedback. Mm, uh, the day before, and probably we are uh, replying uh, the day after, or even two days before, whatever, right? But it's quite accurate, uh, and we didn't have to, uh, the typical thing that someone who is not experienced using these tools is, well, but uh, I'm sure that you have to call them, or I'm, sh I'm pretty sure that you have to deal with that uh, with some uh, video call meetings uh, in order to uh, clarify uh, if the uh, that objective uh, that you have uh, established in that user story is that or, or not. And the truth is that we didn't have to do that. Uh, the problem is another one that I already mentioned. Uh, it's the lack of <laughs> feedback in terms of uh, our end client, right? But in terms of the, the environment, uh, influenced in a in a good way, honestly. Yep. But I, I can understand that with some other type of clients, we cannot apply this approach so transparently as we have done here. In this case, we think that we are lucky because we have a client uh, uh, that it's even open <laughs> to work with all these. Uh, they are already working with some of the, the environments that we are already using and this kind of stuff. So usually the, the, one of the handicaps here is how to get involved. The client, uh, I saw some of these discussions in some of your previous uh, 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 meetings as well, uh, how to get your client involved with some of this stuff, uh, which is very useful for them. But usually they are at the end of uh, this uh, this stuff, right? Did, did you have to explain uh, all the mindset of the agile approach, uh, the transparencies, uh, how uh, yeah. people work together, or, yeah. or did you have another approach to 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 uh, to to force people or to interest people to work like that? And I'm not saying that it, it it's agile, it's all this world. Uh, it's, uh, it's totally explained even in the contract. So when we are uh, responding to the request uh, for quotation, our quotation is already explaining uh, which is our project management strategy, whether they know what it is or not. Of course, we try to use uh, a terminology that is quite neutral. Otherwise, well, these guys, <laughs> Uh, are not the ones that we need. <laughs> uh, but uh, cycles, strategy, um, uh, one week, uh, feedback, meetings, everything is there. We use other words, but everything is there. And it's in the contract because it's part, it's the essential part of our project management uh, and it's part of our services. And then once we are lucky to to be accepted, uh, we have an initial meeting, in this case, as I told you, not with the end client, with our client, in which we uh, are doing the kickoff uh, of the project. Uh, and then we explain how we will proceed using this tool, this environment, and so on. It's some kind of training uh, with the client, and usually it's two, three hours, not just one hour and a half, usually. Mm, okay. So you, you 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 have to explain things, and um, and uh, Jean-Luc ask uh, in, in which uh, stage of the project did you use this uh, agile approach? Um, uh, mainly, it's mainly design, as probably many of you already know that 
uh, Agile is suitable for design activities, but uh, in particular, the project that I showed you or the type of project that I showed you, it's not related to uh, design, although it, the, the, the outcomes that we provide uh, will be used for uh, design uh, purposes, but uh, we are um, uh, working, creating as built models. So, yes, yeah. uh, it's so in your, yeah. more Sorry, in your example, it's, it, it was more uh, focused on uh, production, so to, to, to get some efficiency in the production. But for design activity with creativity, did you test it in this kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not doing a scan, not doing a, a scan to BIM, uh, doing uh, sim simple uh, BIM authoring uh, activities. And it's even, well, it's just as as comfortable as the open beam approach is, because that's why uh, we, in the very beginning, or me in particular, I saw a lot of connection between the open beam workflows and the agile ones. Uh, I, I, I saw it directly, uh, but as I also mentioned, this is not something that it's uh, just for open beam. Of course, if you are not applying open beam, uh, you all of you already are practitioners, right? And maybe yeah. are not uh, in the yeah. right? So, so, yes, because you, uh, the only thing that you have to take into account is in the very beginning, when you are defining your screen planning. And the screen planning here is the, it's the most important thing. Because here, in this type of project that I showed you, the scan to be, uh, it's one week. One week one delivery, uh, one week, one delivery, one week, one delivery. But with design, uh, usually it's not as clear, uh, you know, because usually we have other firms involved. So we have the engineering firm, which, which is not inside your um, uh, team. So if we use, for example, ISO 19650 terminology, uh, we have different appointed parties, right? Mm. So. Uh, how to get all these appointed parties together applying this methodology? The, so this is quite interesting. For example, we have we are working in this hospital uh, project that I mentioned, in which uh, not all the appointed parties are involved uh, in the same way applying this methodology. And what you obtain uh, with this kind of uh, uh, environment is well it's uh, it's it's different uh, the results are different from the ones that I can obtain with the project actually because that's why as you noticed here I didn't mention uh, metrics what about metrics what about measure uh, because and I, 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 I want maybe I don't know if I am able and honored to, 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 to share one time in next months or, or next years with you, uh, with more maturity, we can start applying the layer of metrics uh, and to measure uh, uh, the, the, the our product backlog items here. Uh, but now, if we add that layer here, the level of complexity is too much for, for my team, for the client, and so on. So, Progressively, step by step. It's a long, uh, a long way. <laughs> yes, and one other problem uh, that you, that you, that we saw uh, comparing with the agile in, in IT is, is that in IT you have one team. Normally, it's a collocated team, and uh, we're working on one project. But in the in the design stage, you have the architect. You have uh, one or more uh, engineer. Uh, a company you have uh, some someone for the landscape and other specialists like that so and sometimes uh, every time we are working on a few different projects so how can we have this uh, agile approach that is uh, normally uh, with a collocated team and did you try with uh, not just with your team of four people with with uh, one one uh, two or a team of architects, uh, one engineer, one. I, 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 will I will tell you what uh, we start to apply 
uh, and uh, b b because it's some kind of test, uh, and it's this hospital, uh, which uh, it's the same uh, scenario that you have described, in which we have different uh, teams, uh, different disciplines, and our approach is the following: it's like applying a uh, a granular approach, and I will deploy what I mean with that. Uh, uh, our uh, our team, which is uh, providing uh, BIM consultancy services to an engineering firm, is uh, working applying uh, agile with engineering firm, which is involved the same way as or similarly as you have seen here. In this case, uh, they were quite skeptical to learn a new tool, and we had to uh, uh, train them through the use of Microsoft Excel uh, uh, bridge connection uh, with uh, Azure boards. Okay, so they are uh, including and they are enriching uh, the data um, within each of those work items, tasks, and product back backlog items. Uh, and so on through um, uh, Microsoft Excel. But the, 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 the nice thing is that uh, after some weeks of work, they discovered that in Microsoft Teams, in which they already are, they, they saw those tabs there in which they see directly uh, Azure Boards. So, Hey guys, you were skeptical using a new tool. Oh, let's use our uh, comfort zone called Microsoft Excel. But in the end, because we use a lot of Microsoft Teams, so they are already there. So now we are not now we are not trying because we don't want to uh, um, uh, to, to disturb uh, our engineers. <laughs> but if we are lucky to have an, an X project with them. Uh, I think that we could, could go and we could jump uh, again. So, what about the architects in this case? They are not even uh, within the Microsoft Teams because they don't want. Imagine, but they are because it's a public uh, project uh, involved in the same uh, lead appointed party. Uh, but uh, they don't want to uh, get involved in the same communication hub, uh, and we. Uh, obtained uh, this, uh, uh, we, we won this competition saying that we would be uh, applying Agile and so on. So how to deal with that? So, uh, and this is when it appears this granular approach that I, uh, I was telling you. Uh, what we at least need is some kind of big tasks, not uh, with the level of granularity that we are using, and uh, sharing Microsoft Excel uh, in our cloud repository. So this is what we're doing. But in the end, it's some kind of uh, workaround uh, in order to connect the data that we obtain from those ones. Of course, I don't remember the name of uh, the, the colleague that asked me about the, the influence of the, 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 the tools and system towards the, the behavior, but in this case, as you can imagine, uh, the relationship between uh, engineering and architecture towards this uh, uh, is it's not the, the best one. But in some way, uh, we can at least track the progress of uh, the other uh, appointed uh, party, right? And this is how uh, we are applying it. I will tell you in. Uh, in the next month, because we are in the middle of the of the war. Okay, <laughs> so it's a good introduction to the next uh, meeting. It's a, it's a six seven months uh, mm -hmm. project. So that could be interesting. You have your feedback in a, in a few months. So I don't know if if there is any other question in, in the comment. No, but one last question for me is: uh, so uh, what is the most difficult things for 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 you to 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 implement or to to make understandable to to other people to 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 go in a, an agile uh, uh, way, especially uh, 
the is, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, 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 is 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 it the tool part or the the um, no it's the it's the, the part or the it's 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 the 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 not the methodology because once they understand what's behind that it's quite easy uh, especially when you uh, explain them that in the end there is the client expectation so what the client expects and this is uh, uh, this is what uh, they really want the the most difficult thing or the the the, the difficulties that I had and I have always when I have some new collaborator in my team and even with some clients is to move them from the waterfall approach because some of them they are these ones are project managers uh, my client so uh, they are like gant adapted right so for, for, for them it's it's difficult to to see the difference between a user story and some kind of a clear requirement or some kind of uh, big task you know uh, and uh, this is not what your client uh, expects what your client expects is the quality uh, uh, within that deliverable not the deliverable itself uh, and sometimes it's what is uh, a bit difficult in, in the beginning but once you start working and showing how uh, you uh, provide them the outcomes and so on, then it's not so difficult. The question of tools, as you, Francois, uh, mentioned, well, as any, especially if you are dealing with people uh, that is quite digitalized in terms of, uh, uh, well, digital transformation uh, in a way or other, it's not, it's not difficult. The, the difficulties are, that's why we are trying to use some comfortable environments when we see that our client is not so digitalized, uh, like Microsoft Excel and so on. But sometimes it's, it's another type of uh, attitude because then you discover that they are using more and far more sophisticated and complicated <laughs> digitalized environments. Uh, uh, but it's because they don't want to, 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 to go out from their comfort zone. So you have to adapt what you are doing internally and trying to 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 find some kind of connection uh, bridge to, to connect with them you know uh, once you 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 find that you can go on okay and in terms of person uh, is it more manager or the modeler or? The, the the team members yeah, yeah. what, what yeah. are the team members that are more hard to to move to uh, yeah uh, yeah, yeah, of course, but all of us, uh, 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 each of us, we already always have some kind of comfort, comfort zones, although some of us, we are always uh, more uh, uh, on the edges of those uh, comfort zones, right? But well, what to do? Yeah, yeah, sure. Everybody has his own problem. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know if it's... It's, there is other question. It's, we are just near two hours presentation. So thank you very, very much, uh, David, for this uh, very uh, enriching uh, presentation. So uh, I, I will share with you um, a link to a Roti. A Roti is, a, is, a, is an agile process to have some feedback about the presentation. So if you, you can uh, scan the QR code with your... It was your phone, or you can type the address in your uh, in your in your browser, and uh, give us some feedback about the, the the presentation. So we all understand that you you will give us some uh, other feedback in the in the next uh, month about the project or about uh, other subject like you you mentioned um, uh, metrics. So we we are very open to that, and it's uh, it could be very interesting. So uh, next uh, next meetup we will have uh, someone from Brazil who will talk uh, about his uh, his own uh, agile uh, experience uh, also. Uh, so more uh, <laughs> meetups in English. Uh, so thank you very much for everybody. Uh,
uh, and uh, have a good uh, day or night. I don't know uh, where you are. So Sebastian uh, shares a roti link uh, in the comments. So thanks for your feedbacks and thanks uh, for your presence. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you.